This is a selection of mock tests where we do if statements and questions on selection programming for grade 10 IT and this is question 2. So yeah, we have quite an interesting program. We've got a program which helps organizers for a workshop keep track of the course costs and participants are going to use this program to register for one of the courses. So there we've got these different courses and obviously they've got different costs involved. We must complete the button for the or complete the code for the add button, which determines which course they selected by using the radio group. So we're using radio groups here, and we determine which rate. And we must then obviously, if the member is a local member based on a checkbox, they get a fifteen percent discount. No discount if they're not local. And then the total of all the fees must be calculated whenever a fee has been entered, and this must be displayed in EDT total. The participant's name and course must be displayed in some sort of rich edit control and uh, the constants for the amounts for the different causes have been declared for us so we'll see what a constant is there and so this is what the program looks like so every time we click on a button we will obviously have the person's name we'll have which course they select and if they're local or not and it'll put those details in obviously if they're local they get that 15 percent discount and every time we add someone there's this total cost at the bottom that's going to be accumulating all these these values for the courses. Okay, so let's first get the this part working and then we'll come to this part. So let's go to the program over here. So yeah, we've got our program. Um, we're going to click on add participant and we've already get the, we get the name from the edit control. That's great. So now we want to add to the courses based. We want to add which course they selected. And we want to add how much the cost is involved. So we need to work out a couple of things. So I've already got some variables here. Um, I've got the name, which I'm using to get the name. I've got which course they selected. And then the cost. So let's work out which course they selected. So if they get a course, I'm going to do the following. So I need to determine which one is selected from this radio group. Now this radio group is called RGB courses. And so if the radio group courses... Which property of the radio group tells me what is selected? Well, it's the item index. And if the first one is selected, the item index will be a zero. So if that call, if that item index of the radio group course is zero, then we know that the first item was selected. So we know that the first one is selected. So ABC 101. So I'm going to record the name of the course. So S course is going to be equal to the string ABC 101 and we want to work out the cost well the costs are cost is going to equal to now I don't actually need to put in the value because if I scroll up there look we've got these constants these values have already been declared for us so I can just use ABC cost and it will put in 75 so the, the cost will be the ABC cost constant so take whatever's in that constant and put it into uh, the r cost that's if the first one is selected else if it's not selected what happens if the other option is selected if the courses dot item index it's courses dot item index if that's the second option would be if it's a one now remember if you use an else the line before it must have no semicolon so there we go if it's that, then we're going to do the exact same thing as this one. So I'm just going to copy and paste it to save time. But in this case, we're going to have course DEF201. So DEF201, and then the course will be the DEF cost. There we go. And then else, remember, took the semicolon away because we got it else here. Else. Now, I could technically say, well, it's definitely the third option, but as you can see now, none of them are selected, so there is a possibility that none are selected. So let's just make sure that they selected something. So I'm going to say, if the item index in this case is a 2, which means the third option was selected, then I can do the exact same thing as what I'm doing. But in this case, it's going to be the GHR 201 course. GHR 201 and then the GHR cost. So if the item index is a zero, then we do the ABC course. If it's a one, we do the DEF course. If it's a two, we do that course. And then I'll put a semicolon there because there's no more else. There we go. So we've basically recorded which course they took and what the cost is for that course. Now, before I display that person's name, 
and their course and their cost. I need to first of all work out if they get a 15% discount. So over here, after we've worked out the cost, I'm going to say, if the checkbox local, how do I know if it's checked? If it's got the check property equals true, or you can actually just leave that out because it'll assume that if I say dot checked, it means is it true. But you can say, if it's true, what does that mean? Well, then I must take the R cost and I must give them a 15% discount. So what's 15% discount mean? Is it 15%? Let's check. 15% discount. So for that, we need to say 15%, which is 15 divided by 100 of the cost. So that's what 15% of the cost is. 15% of the cost. And we're going to take that cost. That's how much they're going to take off. And we're going to take whatever is in the R cost variable and minus this 15% off of the cost. And that answer, I'm going to plug back into R cost. You could have a separate one, but just remember that if you have a separate variable for the final cost, for example, then you would need to else the final cost would just be whatever the cost value is because the minute you make sure that you cover that. So in this case, we are only minusing this 15% to the R cost and making that the new R cost in the event that they are local. Okay, so that's one way of doing it. As I said, the other way you could have done it is you could have said R final is equal to this. I'll, I'll comment it out now so you can see it could equal to that. Else... In the event that it's not checked, then R final will just equal to the R cost. In other words, without a discount. So you could have done that as well. And then you would display the R final price as a variable. You obviously declare it first. Okay, so we've got our calculations. And now I'm going to display it in the rich edit. So rich edit, what property? Dot lines dot add. Now, how do we want to display this? We want to display the name with a tab. So remember, there's some tabs here. So where do we get the name from? We get the name from S name. So we're going to say S name plus a hash now. Now S name is a string, so that's fine. Then we want to add the course that we've got. So how do we get the course? Well, that's going to be the S course variable, which is also a string. So that's fine. And then we're going to put another hash now. And then after that, we're going to put the amount that they've got to pay. You'll notice, though, that it's in currency. So that's something to be remembered. So we're going to add, let's put a plus there, plus the S course, plus the hash nine, plus whatever the R cost variable is. But we want that. To, that's, first of all, that's a real. So we need to convert it to a string to fit in this string amalgamation that we are doing. But we need to convert it from a float to a string, but I'm going to put a float string FY because we want to convert it to the R cost to an FF currency, comma, eight to two decimal places. Let's do that. Let's see what that does. Okay, let's run it. Obviously, we haven't finished. We're just running to see if it works a bit. And we can see if it gets us the results that we want. So if I select Mr. Long, Mr dot long and I say the ABC course and add okay it displays all nasty and 75 but if I'm a local person it'll add it with a 15% discount and the same with the DEF if I take the 15% discount off that's the original price and if the GHE without the discount and if I say local there's with the discount so there we go that's working now how do I every time I click on it it accumulates that value so which that basically means every time I click on the button it needs to save what the final, the total cost is after the button has finished doing what it does. Now that means that's a problem with the button because all these variables in a button will disappear once the button's finished, which means we need a global variable. So right here at the top, you can make it under private or public, even under here under var. So let's make it public. We're going to say our total, which is going to be a real because we're adding all these costs. Now, when you declare a global variable, it's automatically set to zero. They are automatically set to zero. So what I'm going to do every time I click on the add button, I'm going to over here. Once I've added them, I say R total, which the first time will be a zero. Take whatever's in R total and add this R cost. 
Okay, so the first time is a zero, so it adds the cost onto the zero, and so now it'll be whatever it is, 98 Rand or whatever. Then the next time, we'll take that 98 Rand, add the new cost of the new person that we've added, and make that the new R total. And every time we do that, we also need to display it. Where are we displaying it? In EDT total dot, what property? The text property. We're going to put R total in there, just like it is. But this is a uh, real, that's a string. And we want to display it like a currency. So let's make this float to string F. Display R total to FF currency to eight comma two decimal places. Eight in the front, two at the back. Let's see how it goes. So you should see this accumulate. So M dot long. A, B, C, so we add, boom, so 75, it adds, now if, uh, if I add this, it takes that 63 and add on, and if I add another, see it's accumulating this value quite nicely. So there we go, that's the question, and I think that's all, let's go look and see if we've done everything, looks like it's done everything, oh, there we go, all done. For the other videos from this mock test, go to our YouTube channel, please subscribe, give us a like, leave a comment, we'd love to hear from you, and remember, don't do it the long way. Do it the Mr. Long Way.